Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog on my, my channel. Today, for the first time ever in my life, I'm travelling on first class of Great Western Railway from Oxford to Worcester, Fol Worcester Folgate Street, um, which is actually part of a longer trip to Hereford and South Wales. But um, this train terminates at Great Marlwood, and as I bought an advance ticket, I'll only be able to go as far as Worcester Folgate. Street, which is still quite a long journey it's a good about hour 20 minutes here from here in Oxford so still something to look forward to and the best thing about today's trip I've only paid £9.20 for what is a rather long trip for an advanced single and for the first class city that is an absolute bargain I mean it's only £1.65 more than the cheapest standard class advanced single which is £7.55 so, join me aboard Great Western Railway's first class and you'll find out whether the extra money is worth it or not. As my train was due in about 10 minutes, it was time to head over to Platform 4 where my train would depart. Unfortunately, I'm not keen on Oxford Station. Whilst the facilities are excellent, with a variety of shops and restaurants for a medium-sized station, the canopies on platforms 3 and 4 were sadly in a state of disrepair, and it's clear that this station needs a refurbishment. Luckily, the same can't be said for platforms 1 and 2, platforms for the Chiltern Railway services to London Marabone, which are of a much more recent construction. Sadly, my train was delayed by 6 minutes, but eventually the 5 carriage Great Western Railway Hitachi 8300 Intercity Express Train or IET arrived. It was a 5 car 800 slash 0 and interestingly I had the very first class 800 built, 800-001. Great Western Railway have a total of 93 of these trains in a mix of a 5 and 9 car configuration including the pretty much the same class 802 and are used on great intercity services connecting London with Oxford, Bristol, Devon, Cornwall, South Wales, Worcester and Hereford. As the train arrived, it was time to head over to my seat, located in Coach D. Coach D is in Coach 4 or 5 on a 5 car, class 800 or 802. We depart Oxford and head over north towards the Cotswolds on the Cotswold line towards Worcester. Trains normally run every hour between London and Worcester Shrub Hill, however these very often extend to Great Malvern, as was the case with my train, or sometimes even further to Hereford. Our first stop on this journey is Hanborough, one of the few stations on the Cotswold line still to have a single platform and track. Time to review my seat in more detail. Tables are much larger compared to standard class and additionally in first class you don't need to bring your plug socket if you fancy charging your phone as there are also USB chargers. Additionally, unlike standard class, plug sockets and USB chargers are next to you, whilst in standard class they are located underneath you. Now for the seat comfort. The seat in first class is much larger than in standard class and also comes in a seat cover which makes the journey more comfortable and consequently also easier to relax and sleep if you're tired. However, the bottom part of the seat padding was exactly the same as in standard class which means that whilst paying the extra price to travel in first class is worth it, I wouldn't say it was the most amazing first class journey I had ever done. It's also interesting to see that the seat cover is movable.
Without a doubt, the Cotswold Line is one of my favourite railway lines in the UK. The scenery is lovely. One other thing I've also noticed in first class is a button located to the left of your seat. I have no idea what it does and when I pressed it, it didn't seem to do anything. The next stop on this journey after Hamburg is Charbury. It's interesting how the signage at this station dates from the 1900s or even the 1800s. It certainly contributes to railway history. The scenery gets even better after Charbury. The weather on that day was rather weird. At some point it was raining heavily, but at other points it was a not rather nice sunny day. The weather was rather variable. First class configuration on Great Western Railway's class 800-802 IETs comes in a 2 plus 1 configuration and honestly, I like it. In the 5 coach version, First class is in coaches D and E, which in the case of this particular journey, it was at the back of the train. Although only in coach E does first class occupy the whole carriage and even then there is also a kitchen as well. In coach D, which was the coach I was travelling on, first class only occupies a tiny half of the train, with the rest of, the, of coach D being in a standard class configuration. It was about 30 minutes into the journey and the catering still hadn't turned up yet. At this point I was starting to become worried that the catering staff had fully run out of food and drinks. So at this point I decided to head over to the back of the train, coach E, to ask the, the lady what ha happened with the catering. Thankfully plenty of food and drinks were still available. It turns out that the lady hadn't spotted me as I had gotten on at Oxford and this train started its journey at London Paddington, an hour before Oxford. On this particular journey, food options were limited to savoury and sweet snacks. I decided to have some biscuits, which tasted quite nice. Drink options included Diet Coke and water, and I decided to have some water. I have to say that the food and drink offers were good, although more options could be offered such as sandwiches or, or even hot food. Understandably, this was a rather short journey that only takes about an hour, so these options aren't necessary. However, I'd say they become more of a necessity for much longer journeys such as from London to Swansea or Penzance. After Pershaw, the, the lady came again for a second round of offering of food and drinks. Whilst I do enjoy eating, I wasn't feeling too hungry at the moment, so I just decided to take an extra bottle of water. We are now at Worcestershire Parkway, the final station before the two Worcester stations, Shrub Hill and Fourgate Street. This is one of the Cotswolds Line's most recent stations, having only opened in February 2020 and it provides an exchange with cross-country services to Cardiff, Nottingham and Birmingham. And here we arrive at Worcester Fourgate Street, two stations before the terminus of Great Malvern, where I will be changing onto a West Midlands Railway Class 172 Turbo Star to continue my journey into Hereford. <laughs> All right, here I am at Worcester Fourgate Street, waiting for my West Midlands Railway train to Hereford. So, would I overall, I would say Great West, first class on Great Western Railway is definitely worth the extra price. The seats are generally fairly the same as standard class, so um, fairly comfortable, not not the best. However, one thing you do get on first class, which you don't in standard class, are these nice comfortable uh, green macassars, which um, definitely will make the journey more comfortable and if you're really tired, it'll be much easier to sleep as well. I'd say the extra price is also worth it if you fancy some free, free food. Um, 
the catering offerings were definitely quite good. There were some uh, sweet and savoury snacks available, as well as some water and Dutch Diet Coke. And, and on some longer distance services, which sadly wasn't the case with my journey, you ought to get some hot food or sandwiches as well as an option. One thing I will point out though is that um, as I got on at Oxford and this train started from London Paddington, um, it did take quite a while for the catering to arrive. In fact, the first time I actually had to go to Co Coach E um, and I thought, which this can, and this can happen sometimes, that the catering wasn't going to be available. So I went to Coach E, um, as you've seen earlier, and asked the kind lady the, about first first class, and she she said that she didn't see see me. So in the end, I managed to try out all the food and drink offerings, which was good. In fact, I would have been quite disappointed if. There were, I wouldn't have been able to try all the food and drink off with considering I did pay a, a bit extra to travel in first class, you know. So, um, that said, as you've seen after Pershaw, the kind lady came again for a second round of offering. So, yeah. So, overall, I'd say 7 out of 10. It's not the, wasn't the most amazing experience. And I wouldn't say it was the best first class I've ever be, been on. I'm sure there's much better first class tra train journeys, both in the UK and in other countries as well. But I still say the extra price can be wor worth it if you fancy having a slightly more comfortable seat and if you fan fancy having some free food. Anyways, this now concludes my first Great Western Railway um, IET. Please take care around the station today. If you see or hear something that doesn't seem right. First class. So yeah, now my train to Hereford is arriving. So this concludes my vlog for for today, my Great Western Railway first class IET review. So as usual, thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.